Be sure to check out Meteoric, the new album by Sarah Flash. has been a fairly prevalent fixture in the doujin shooting landscape in the west for a couple of years now, with such releases as Satasia's Tale of Altinex and now Gigantic Army, a mech-based running gun in the same vein as the classic Cybernator and Metal Warriors on the Super NES. Developed by the fine folks at Astroport who also brought Shmupper's 2011 side-scrolling Satasius, Gigantic Army is not only a great homage to the 16-bit mech games of the 90s, but also a bit of a change of pace. Yet, it offers a worthy shooting experience if you're into PC-based doujin shooting games. Let's take a closer look. Piloting a mech is fun and all, but only if you can lay waste to the world in a spectacular, fiery fashion. Thankfully, Gigantic Army delivers. The controls here are smooth and work rather well, even when you're surrounded by menacing opposition whether you're on the ground or in the air. The controls in Gigantic Army are as you might expect. Players move their mech left and right at a steady pace. Your mech can also jump and your verniers can carry you a small distance into the air, which is useful in crossing larger gaps. Double tapping the directional buttons will allow you to dash forward as well, though it's tricky to do. The second button press needs to be held for a guaranteed dash. On the whole, it's nice and sharp, so making at least some progress isn't especially hard to do. Meanwhile, your gun can be angled to take aim at your varying ground and air-based opposition by pressing up or down. It takes a bit of time to lift and drop your gun to the right elevations, but it really feels like you might expect from a 30-foot machination. To defend yourself against a hail of bullets that'll be coming your way, there's also a shield function that will block a great deal of your opposition's bullets. If you can get up close to your victim, though, a spiked pile driver will make quick work of almost anything that it makes contact with, bosses included. Like Satasius, players can choose from a variety of weapons, including a linear machine gun, a spread shot, and a grenade gun. Secondary weapons include spread bombs, homing missiles, and a super effective laser cannon. It all boils down to personal taste, but like the best shooting games out there, players have a good amount of choice to use what they're comfortable with. Along the way, various pickups can be obtained by blasting away various crates strewn across the battlefield. T pickups will increase your timer, which, when at zero, ends the game. P icons will increase your weapon's power, and H pickups will increase your health. All of these are pretty welcome additions, especially in the unlockable difficulties. Good thing, too, because Gigantic Army has six action-packed stages that really make for a fun, if chaotic, time. The challenge really ramps up in the middle of the game, though, and with only three continues, it can take a bit of practice to see the end on normal. Those with serious skill can take on hard and insane modes, complete with their own ridiculous achievements on Steam. There isn't a lot to the scoring in Gigantic Army. There are really only points for points sake in this game, since there is no extend score and no way to boost your limited continues. Scoring high in Gigantic Army can be done in a couple of different ways though. By collecting additional power or health pickups when at max, you can gain a tidy score boost often in the tens of thousands. At stage end, you can get a rather large boost through a formula involving the remaining time you have, your remaining shields, and special weapons count. But again, there isn't much to score towards here. But with the replay option, there's perhaps a bit of bragging rights to be had, though an online leaderboard is sorely lacking. The score will factor into some of the Steam achievements though, and some of the requirements are pretty insane, like 18 million on insane difficulty with no continues for example.
One area in which Gigantic Army shines is in its presentation. Between its dismal, war-torn backgrounds and cool mechanical design, not to mention some decent tunage, Gigantic Army definitely has a style that's all its own. Between stages, the story is told from the perspective of a field engineer watching events unfold on the sidelines with digital entries to a personal diary, dated in what seems to be an alternate 2009. The sprites and enemies are quite well designed and fairly well animated, despite the vast majority of the movement being rotation based. That lends to its indie looks and feel, which isn't at all a bad thing. There are also all kinds of details in the visuals that really pop, like huge battles raging in the background, shells flying off your guns, and dust getting kicked up by your verniers. Good stuff. Like Satasius before it, Gigantic Army has a pretty decent soundtrack that bears resemblance to its creator's previous work, with driving bass and great ambience. On the whole, it's fairly well composed, but some BGM could really have been used in the intermissions. The sound effects are squarely in the doujin category though, with many having been used in countless other games by other studios like Orange Juice, Marsbound, Platide Dispositif, and many more for years. The Steam version of Gigantic Army in particular benefits from a hefty dose of achievements in addition to the various gameplay tweaks that make it a better game than the original 2010 release. There are 44 in all and add a layer of replayability for achievement hounds everywhere to sink their teeth into. There are even Steam trading cards thrown in as an added bonus. So on the whole, Gigantic Army is a fun, satisfying game that is not only accessible but holds a decent amount of replay value. But how does it stack up? Let's take a look. <laughs> Generally speaking, Gigantic Army has the easy to grasp, solid control. The dash function in particular is a bit stiff though. With multiple unlockable difficulties, there's surely a mode for everyone in Gigantic Army. But easy and normal will be a breeze for seasoned mech pilots. At six stages, there isn't a whole lot of length here to the game, but unlocking the higher difficulties will take multiple playthroughs. Getting all of the achievements and Steam cards might take a while too. Despite being in fairly low resolution, the backdrops here are stark and unmistakable. The mech design is also pretty good. But while the animation is pretty good, since most of it is rotation based, it feels just a tiny bit cheap. The OST in Gigantic Army is more than fitting with some really driving tunage. But while the sound effects are good, a lot of them have also been used in many other doujin titles for many years. While Gigantic Army comes off as very solid, it has very little identity outside of its presentation. As a heartfelt tribute to games like Cybernator, Metal Warriors, and Front Mission Gun Hazard, Gigantic Army succeeds. But on its own merits, it falls short of greatness ingenuity-wise. Gigantic Army is a great tribute to the mech-based running guns of the 90s and deserves a spot on anyone's hard drive that used to love playing them in their youth. Being widely available on a variety of downloadable PC platforms doesn't hurt either. Gigantic Army gets a 3.5 out of 5. You can get your copy of Gigantic Army for just $5.99 on Steam, Desura, Gamersgate, and New Media's site. For fans in the UK, it can also be had on Rice Digital for £3.49.